This week on Real News Podcast, we talk Hello Neighbor. After that, we dive into our biggest disappointment of 2017. Then we go into our AAA favorite game of the year, and then our top three indie games of the year, which lead to our game of the year. After that, we close out the show with the NPC game. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest. Welcome to the final episode of Real Dudes Podcast of the year. Ever. My name is Ever. We're done. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. My name is Kyle, and um, outside of my house, I've got Cody. I sure hope I'm not inside your house. And in the sky, I've got Andrew. It's very cold up here. And in outer space, I've got Carrington. Oh, put the put me out in space. Why can't I be on Mars? <laughs> and by the I mean, way, that is to us. By the way, technically, hey, out hey, space, hey. I guess. I guess. How's so. everyone doing? Good. How are you? <laughs> How are yeah. you? I've been better, but yeah. I'm here. I've got my, right. apple, my, 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 my green apple moonshine, so I'm really good. Oh, I should say nice. up front, I, I am dealing with an illness at the moment, so if I don't sound like my normal, beautiful self, then yeah, now you know why. I'm going to try to slow down your voice just a little bit, make it super deep so it sounds, <laughs> sounds like you're super <laughs> sick. I get You know what? Feel free. That's, that's creative filter. license right there. Um, ba- basically straight up Darth Vader. That's, gonna, that's what I'm wanting yeah. to go for. Just have that's my deep my breathing throat. in there as well. Yeah. Pretty much. So, Karen, did I you, actually could probably get there. You said you're drinking apple pie moonshine. No, green apple moonshine. Oh, green apple moonshine. Yeah. Well, I am drinking the stuff that my wife made, and it is called kombucha. I don't Come know again? if you guys have ever heard this, but let me tell you about this drink here real quick. Is it that weird tea with the fungus yep. floating inside? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Oh exactly. my gosh! Are you that- serious? That. No, no, that is an alien life form. That, that is eat. gross. That's what that is. Yes. Yeah. So she is on this kick of making it, which is kind of wanted me to make start brewing beer. But what it is is it's this this fungus that she got from somebody called a scoby, and it looks like a fetus inside of a jar. And she brews black tea and pours it on there and lets it ferment for a few weeks. Mm-hmm. And that sounds gross. It's for not the record. Out there. I had to transport this from your house, Kyle, to mm. Cody's house. So we both know what this stuff looks like. And yeah. it is a bad mental picture. Right. Yep. So it doesn't taste terrible. It doesn't taste great. But it's all right. And she says that I should drink it because it's healthy. So I thought I'd try it. But right next to it, I've got a beer. So, you know, back up. Okay. Okay. There we go. That, that's <laughs> To wash we'll down the weird fungus with. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, smart. wait, give it six months, it's going to come out that it causes cancer, and then we're all going to laugh, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm going to grow four arms and Pretty much. go on a rampage. Uh, Speaking so of this... rampage, no, I'm just oh, No, don't do it. <laughs> uh, so this episode is a big episode for us. Uh, it is the final one of the year. Um, we kind of want to make it extra special for you uh, listeners out there. Uh, we'll f- we're first going to talk about a game called Hello Neighbor, and it is... A game. And then uh, after that, we're going to go into basically our games of the year. Maybe our top three favorite indie games this year. Um, As a collective group, our favorite indie game together as a year. Uh, And then uh, we can go on to maybe our our favorite personal uh, AAA game, our biggest disappointment, and then the uh, NPC game. So, kind of, it's it's a pretty big show. And I'm excited. Eh? Yeah. Uh, so to kick things off, uh, there's this game uh, that released earlier this month called Hello Neighbor. And basically the premise of it is you are playing as this kid um, that lives in a house across the street from their neighbor. And their neighbor is up to no good. At least that's what it looks like. Um, and your goal is to break into the house... And find out what's going on in the basement of the house. Um, the premise of this game, when it was first announced, like a year or so ago, however long the alpha's been out and the beta's been out, it was really intriguing. I'm like, yeah, cool. Yeah, I can't wait to play this game. And <laughs> I never played it before then because I watched uh, game theorists play it. Uh, Matt Pat and his wife Stephanie, 
And I'm like, man, this game looks awesome. I- I'll just wait till it comes out. And yeah, now I've got the opportunity to play it uh, for this podcast. Yep. And yeah, I don't know. I, I, it, it was appealing to me because, you know, it, it follows the concept of like uh, amnesia or um, uh, Outlast or, you know, it's that first person survival horror game. But yeah, it's which very. Is really... Go ahead. Which is interesting because I was just thinking because it's got a very like kitty type um, setting, like the graphics and stuff are really like cartoony looking and stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, it's it's it is a stealth thriller horror type game. Yeah. Which is you don't think because I think it's rated E ten enough. I don't think it's even it reached the T rating, so which yeah. is interesting. But I mean, you don't see many horror games even below the T rating, which is what I was yeah. excited for it. Yeah. Same here. I. Uh, that was probably the most appealing thing to it for me. And starting the game, I thought the world looked really cool. Like you said, it's very cartoon, like uh, cartoony, uh, bright, vibrant colors. And after that, it went tumbling downhill. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? So fast. Um, because uh, there are a lot of janky f- things that are going on with this game yes did you get that you got that too yes i got okay. stuck a couple times the world didn't act right he would find me if i was hiding for no good reason and i, I never made sense why yeah i i had a lot of re- weird random things happen uh with the neighbor um okay oh, now know. Yeah. <laughs> uh I, I don't even know where to start with this. Um I got a couple recordings from Xbox. I want to do a little compilation video of how glitchy this game is. Uh for instance, there are multiple times uh where the game cheats you. Like you'd think that you're running away from the neighbor and you're getting away, but he clips through a wall and you're automatically caught. Which happened to me multiple times, and it's frustrating. The good thing is it doesn't restart the game completely. It just checkpoints you back to across the street or uh, say for the next section of the level, the, the beginning. I guess it would be the beginning of that level. But it doesn't restart the whole game for you. Um, there are other times where you break into the house and he jumps out and then he launches stuff at your head and hits your house. I don't know if you had that happen, Carrie, did you? That never happened to me. Okay. Happened multiple times to me. Uh, on top of that, after he chased me out of his yard, he would just break into exercising randomly. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, I never just had straight that jumping, to me either. jumping jacks and stretching. Because he would go to sleep for me a lot of times. Like, yeah. like, say he would catch me and then I would run across the street back to my house. He would just go inside and start sleeping and then I would yeah. like break into his house. He would wake up immediately and then just find me immediately. That was my yeah. issue with it. I'm like, what the crap? It, the game is unnecessarily difficult, and it's not like it's a, a good challenging type. It's like a, a, I don't know. I, I don't even know how to really describe it. It's, just, it's broken is what it feels like. The game, to me, feels like it never came out of alpha, and it's and you pay $30 for a broken game. Yes, I agree. Like, if it wasn't for a lot of bugs and AI issues, I mean, I, I would have a little bit more fun with it, at least. Um, and the yeah. game doesn't really tell you exactly what you're going to do. Uh, um, I only know what to do because I've seen, like I said, I've, I watched Matt Pat and his wife Stephanie play it. Um, so I knew what to do, but I could see like, if you're like a fresh player, you didn't know what this game was, decide to buy it and get into it. And the game doesn't tell you or give you any kind of tutorial straight out. Um, it's just puts you in front of your neighbor's house. That, that That's yeah. the start of the game. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You, you know, I feel like we've had such a good year of games that we've played and messed around with that this might be the first game that that was truly a disappointment. I think even universally, because I, I think we've disagreed on a couple of games. Yeah. Um, so, like, some people liked it in the group, other people didn't. But I can say for sure at least that we can agree on this as yeah. to not liking it, unfortunately. Yep. Yeah, I... I didn't get a chance to play it myself, but I said watch plenty of video and obviously listening to you guys 
Uh, yeah, I wasn't necessarily impressed. I did feel like just from what I was watching, like whoever was playing it didn't seem like they had any direction at all. You just kind of got thrown in, and I saw them a lot of times. Like they'd clip, like so clipping through walls seemed like a really common thing. Yeah, and uh, I guess the two questions I have, just kind of as a general group question, whoever wants to field it. Uh, I guess number one, which we kind of touched on, but I kind of would like to explore a little further, is that uh, the issue of does it work as being a, like forget like just just assume all the technical glitch, technical glitches did not exist. Does it work as far as being like this lighthearted and childish aspect to it, but then obviously being like a survival horror game at the same time? Like, how do we feel about that dynamic? Does it work? Because to me, I don't feel like it does. Um, and then my second question, whenever we get uh, done with the first, would be if a game is delayed multiple times, should we not just write it off? Because right? I don't think I've ever known of an instance where a game is, has multiple release date delays and didn't come out as a disappointment in the end. Well, so for the first one, I felt like the... Because I was telling, telling Cody beforehand, I felt like the concept of the game itself is fantastic. I love the concept of it. I just didn't feel like it executed it very well. Yeah. Uh, I think the game had potential to be a really good game. Um, and it got it got progressively creepier. Um, I didn't get super far in it, but uh, towards the second act, things start getting real strange and weird, and you start exploring further into the house. Um, so I think without the bugs and stuff, it might be tolerable, but it definitely, I don't think it would be a great game though. That's what I'm saying. Like, I just don't see it being like, is it an outlast or an amnesia or something like that? I, I just can't ever see it measuring up to that regardless of its technical failures or achievements. Right. No, I don't think it would. Um, like I said, it's not even tolerable now. Uh, you know, Cuphead was is known for how challenging it is and how it can make people rage quit. I didn't rage quit playing that game. I enjoyed the difficulty in that game. This game is not meant is not really meant to be you know super difficult, but because of the AI and how broken it is, it is difficult. And I found myself wanting to multiple times throw my uh, controller through the TV screen. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So on to the. On to the second thought, though. Uh, what what is? Does anybody have any thoughts, Cody? You've been quiet. What are your thoughts on that about uh, release date delays and generally, in my experience, and feel free to disagree or cite examples to the contrary. But I just feel like generally they uh, come out broken if they are delayed that often. Most of the time, in my head, if it gets delayed, they're trying to fix the bugs and stuff like that. With this game, it did not seem that way. It just they. What they delayed it, and then it still came out broken. So, uh, in this aspect, I don't think it works. But generally, I do not mind them delaying games because in my head it makes me think that they're working on something. Improving it. Well, no, I I agree with like I mean conceptually, I'm sure that's what they're trying yeah. to do. But to me, like I think like. I can forgive a single delay, but it seems like when you get into multiple deadline, you know, like release date delays, that tells me like, okay, not, I mean, anybody can make a mistake. Things are screwed up, but like something is fundamentally flawed with what you've done. If you have to take multiple runs at it when you've already set a hard release date. And uh, I mean, I can't really come up with a lot of specific examples at this current second, but I just kind of like vague in a vague sense, I guess, which probably isn't a good way to put it, but um, I, I, I'm thinking back of remembering games that got delayed on multiple, multiple times. And then like, we're like, okay, you know, this game's gonna come out this year. Okay. It's going to come out next year. Okay. It's going to come out the end of this year and we finally get it. And it's a, usually a huge disappointment. So is that like a function of the fact that we have to wait extra long for it? So we continue to just hype it and hype it more, or is it a function of the fact that like something was not right with it at its foundation and like they just kept trying to fix it, but really they needed to start back at square one because of some issue. I think it's the first one, the increased amount of hype, and then when we get it, it is not what we hyped it up to be, and then we are thus disappointed. I because we kind of feel like that it's sorry. One more thing, Karen. Okay. Is it kind of like you're saying? So just going along with the thought of it's like, well, they've had all this extra time, so it's going to be that yeah. much better, basically. Yeah. Okay. Because I've, yeah, I've, I've thought of other games where it's like that, and they delay it, and the community 
hypes it up and then we get it and it sucks. Or um, a game has had like previous games and then this one uh, sucks afterward or something like that. It's just it didn't live up mm -hmm. to its predecessors or something like that, which isn't what you're directly talking about, but it kind of stands the same. Is, oh, yeah, I agree. Is, no, that's a fair point. Yeah. So the delay or the previous games would give a basis of we expect this, and then it doesn't reach that level of expect expectation. Right, is that right? Yeah, expectation. Yeah, okay. yeah. and then it is sense. disappointing to the community. That's a fair argument. And I was going to say, I mean, Cuphead, in most recent example, had, was supposed to come out like, what, two years ago? And it came out and everyone loved it. And for them, it was the hype. You know, they weren't expecting to add so much um, but because they were an indie developer um, and it was being published by Microsoft. Microsoft ultimately had the final word of what was to go in and, and things like that. And from what I've heard, um, the developers said that the that Microsoft kept increasing their their scope, and it took longer. And because of the process, also, it took longer and longer to to do what Microsoft needed them to do because of how much hype was surrounding it. But at the same time, they executed very, very well. And I want to, I, I kind of want to think that it's maybe Microsoft had something to do with that um, because um, Hello Neighbor didn't have that kind of backing like Cuphead did, if that makes sense. And also, um, we all love Nintendo for certain reasons and, and you know, love them or hate them. They are known for delaying their games also, but it's, it's for fixing bugs a lot of times. And in and, and most recent memory, we have Breath of the Wild that was supposed to come out back in 2014, 2015. It was supposed to, Wii U, it was supposed to be a Wii U title, um, but now they have to delay it, delay it, delay it, delay it. We don't know why it was being delayed so much, but we do know that the wait was worth it for at least for that game um i That's think fair. hello neighbor is more of the um rare example that we see in my opinion at least rare example of a game being delayed so many times of and then when it finally gets released it's not what we expect it to be i don't know I, the thing that got me the most like regarding this game is i i even though it got delayed so much I still feel like they kind of just closed their eyes and they just handed it out to everybody at a $30 price point and said, here you go, we hope you enjoy it. Whereas, you know, this game is, is probably worth like $5. In my opinion, it is. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where I'm going with this. It's just... It's just irritating. <laughs> I really don't like this it's game. Okay, Kyle. Yeah. It's okay, man. I know. I really we, we don't. understand. Um, but yeah, I agree with what you said there, Carrington. That is true. So I... Sorry, go ahead. No, you're and good. I was going to say also, like, no. Nintendo has a reputation for also delaying their games in general. More, more likely than not, it's a Zelda game, but, you know, with Metroid Prime 4 being announced for a, a 2018 release date... A lot of people are like, I don't know if it's even going to come out in 2018 because Nintendo has that reputation. And I think they're trying to set a new name for themselves also because here Nintendo announced all these games to come out this year. Not one of them, with the exception of Breath of the Wild originally, but not one of them was delayed once. You know, Splatoon 2, um, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Super Mario Odyssey, you know, some really big titles that people are expecting to be delayed, but... Nintendo said it's coming out, and and I don't know what is I don't know why or how what voodoo Nintendo has going on behind the scenes to to make games and still make them game of the year type material, and 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 to be really good at it. Um, Nintendo ha tends to have so, a certain polish about certain things that no one else seems to do so nintendo may be an exception to the rule I, maybe we, we should come back and visit this you know do delayed games tend to be worth the wait or not um because nintendo said, is I, the only one that that comes to mind that it, for the most part is worth the wait well there there's nintendo polish is a real thing i'm sorry cody but it is 
but <laughs> no, I maybe it's just my drug addled state at the moment, but and I can't recall specific examples, but and and I you all have valid examples, so I you know I can't argue that, and there's obviously even if I have a point to my question, um, you know, or, or kind of my stance that, you know, del, you know, multiple delays on a game uh, tend to be a harbinger for, a, you know, a bad game. Um, you obviously have some solid examples on the contrary. So I don't know, like I said, that I would be something I'd maybe like to try to do a little more research and maybe like I said in a future episode address a little more fully because uh, I don't know, just to me, just kind of once again, taking a vague basic view of it, Maybe not in like the most recent memory, but not so many years removed. Um, I feel like I remember, you know, it was common. Like, you know, if a game, you know, they're like, well, it's going to, if it gets two or three delays, like it's either going to get completely canceled or it's going to be um, a disaster when it finally comes out. Cause like they basically finally, like they keep trying to fix it, they can't fix it. And then they finally just kind of like Kyle said, close their eyes and say, well, here you go. Give me, a, give us our money. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they just they they just can't really get it like they want it. And uh, like I said, once again, I, I could be wrong. Nope, I agree with that. Uh, so thinking about this game over the last few days, uh, I as far as like a rating for it, I kind of thought that it was um, <clears throat> fitting that it would get an O duels. Oh, oh. <laughs> Ouch. I was thinking of that, that weird alien drink you're drinking. A kombucha? Even, yeah, even though I've never had it before. Okay. <laughs> it just looks disgusting. So my reasoning <laughs> uh, my reasoning for the Oduls is um, it is a, a faux beer. Uh, it provides you the taste of what you want, but it doesn't, you know, it's not real. It's, it's non-alcoholic beer. Um, I'll take that. So with the game, you know, it, it provides you with a of what you want it to be, you know, survival horror, survival horror, but it doesn't deliver. I think that's quite well put. Right. Yeah. Indeed. Yep. <laughs> I'll agree. So, so there you have it. Uh, Hello Neighbor by Pixel Dynamic. Um or dynamic pixels. Sorry about that. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully, they might do some updates and, and fix the game. I would like to see that. Um, but as of right now, uh, it is I would not, not spend. Beer. Yeah, I would not spend thirty dollars on this game. A solid Oduls rating. A solid Oduls. I think that's uh, saying a lot because of an alcoholic drink with no alcohol. I don't know. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so before we get on to uh, the Game of the Years, least favorite Game of the Years, jib-jab, chit-chat, let's go to a break. <laughs> do you like to rage quit? Sometimes we all do. Do you like to take a sledgehammer and smash it right over your phone? Or do you like to take the phone and throw it right into your TV? How about do you like to take the phone and throw it into a fire? Yeah, we all like to rage quit sometimes, but thankfully, there's Otterbox. Otterbox offers a range of cases that fit every taste and lifestyle. Their cases use patent technology that provides superior protection for smartphones. With their innovative engineering group, dozens of patents, and robust sales and marketing teams, Otterbox is growing and expanding and plans to continue this trend. So, before you buy a phone accessory, make sure you check out Otterbox. And you can do that by going to Real Dudes Podcast slash affiliates and clicking right on that Otterbox link. Hey, 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 everybody. It's Carrington here to tell you about our awesome and fantastic merch you can get for us. Just head on over to realdudespodcast.com slash store. You can get everything from shirts, sweaters, hoodies, aprons, mugs, buttons, wristbands, you name it, we got it. So head on over to realdudespodcast.com slash store and get your merch today. Welcome back. So that was a awesome break. Just want to let everybody know that that was an awesome break. And we're going to go straight <laughs> into our <laughs> countdowns. Um, Love it. So, 
we are going to start with, uh, we're going to be on a, we're going to start on a positive note here and go with our worst games of the year. <laughs> our Woo! biggest disappointments or our biggest yeah, letdown. Yeah. Um, and I think in order for us, let's, we'll try to go in order here. Uh, we'll start with, um, Cody. Huh? Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. What was, what was your biggest letdown, uh, this year? My biggest letdown of the year happened to be a triple um, A title. I don't know if you can call it a triple A title from the results it got, um, but it turned out to be a Mass Effect Andromeda. Uh, I guess purely for the fact that the originals I thought were really good games, and the um, thought of the new one led me to play them all again, and it got me all hyped up, as mentioned earlier. But all the hype of the originals let me down for what we received in the new one. And it just didn't live up to my expectations and just ended up tanking, in my opinion. Okay. Fair enough. That game got pretty bad uh, rapport. Yeah. Um, uh, Carrington? My most disappointing game of 2017... I keep going back and forth between two of them. And I think this one wins out by sheer reputation alone. And that's I'm going to go with Lawbreakers um, from our, our good good friend. Well, he's not a good friend of the show by any means. Uh, Cliffy B. Uh, he's the creator of, you know, little titles that we know, such as Gears of War and Unreal Tournament and all these other fantastic games that he's made um, over the years. And he made his own studio. And this is going to be his first game on his own in quite some time. It turned out to be Lawbreakers. And it just... it. I tried playing it for like a week straight. And I was like, I tried to force myself to love it. I just couldn't do it. And I thought, well, maybe the game was too fast for me. Because I've been playing so much Overwatch over the year. Uh, this past year. And the more I played it, the more I was like, the mechanics just aren't there. And I was I was ready to be uh, engulfed in a new, like, competitive type game like Overwatch. And Lawbreakers just wasn't it. And I think the numbers show how big of a disappointment it was. It went from, you know, several thousands of concurrent users to literally 10 in over a month. 10 concurrent users online playing in that game at the same time. 10? 10. It one made zero. Head, it made headlines. It was not good. Wow. That's that's really sad. Yeah. Yeah. And they haven't really improved it. I I tried playing it uh, a couple of weeks ago and I'm like mm-hmm. still not there. Just not there. Okay. Fair enough. Andrew. All right. Uh Well, I think I'm going to have to go with uh what we discussed earlier. I gave it Took a few minutes to think about it a little more fully, and I'm gonna have to go with Battlefront Two. Um, okay. Not because it was a complete disappointment. Uh, like I, said, I bought it, I've played it, and uh, I've enjoyed it. But like I think it's more of a. Once again, as I was saying earlier, it's where the expectations were as to where the game actually landed. Um, like I said, I don't think that the mechanics were quite up to snuff. I thought that they were pretty much the exact same mechanics you got from one, which I thought could have used a little brushing up. Um, I think that. For you know a 2017 game, they they just weren't uh, up to snuff. It should have been a lot more smooth and fluid on the mechanics, and uh, the story was good, not great. And I think they really hyped the story, you know, to be this epic, you know, tale from the Empire, so to speak. And uh, once again, good. Uh, I'm I was I, mean, I enjoyed it, but not great, which is what we were kind of expecting. Obviously, there's the whole microtransaction debacle, and you know all that you know ridiculous fallout that's still kind of ongoing. The fact that as Carrington brought to my attention a week or so ago, like up to not that long ago and maybe still currently, like they have yet to sell a million copies, which yeah. for a triple A title, let alone a star Wars triple A title is abysmal. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think it's one of those things. Is it a bad game? No, but is it disappointing? Absolutely. And once again, trying to speak to something that I've actually played and actually gotten my hands on and, uh, you know, really know a lot about. There may be a more deserving candidate out there, but for me personally, I would have to say Battlefront 2, even though I would still actually, if somebody asked me today, like, hey, is it, you know, 
once again, maybe not sixty dollars, but I already know in some places there was maybe some flash sales where there was like forty to forty bucks already. Like, is it worth forty bucks? Yeah, I mean, if you're a Star Wars fan and you you know you enjoy that kind of thing, then yeah, it, it'd be worth like you know a forty dollar price tag. So it's worth having, but uh, but it's not the it's uh, it's not the sequel we were looking for. Right. No, I, I completely yeah I completely get that. Uh, without getting into the movie itself, have you have you played any of the latest DLC for it? I have not played any of the DLC, no. Okay. I was kind of wondering how that, if they kind of spruced up on the campaign, because I know they put a couple more missions in there. Oh, that'd be good to know, and like, I'll have to check that out, but no, I, I just played the, the main, ca- you know, the regular campaign with none of the DLC, so, uh, like I said, that, there was, I don't know, have you played it all the way through, Kyle, or no? No. Uh-uh. No. Like I said, there's one so, kind of sort of twist at the end of the campaign that was kind of neat. But um, otherwise, like the campaign was just it was very pedestrian. And some of the levels were like legit, just uh, like a shameless. Uh, how you want to put this? Just a way to put one of their heroes that I'm no sure, no doubt they were expecting you to have to purchase for a million dollars in the yeah. uh, for the multiplayer. It was basically just a shameless hero showcase, like the whole yeah. level. That's all it was, was just showcasing a hero. And it's like, really? But. I mean, they kind of tried to work it in and make it seem like it was really part of the story, but it was a pretty thinly veiled attempt. Yeah. So, anyway, that's my thought. <laughs> so, I put a lot of thought into this one. Um, my biggest disappointment of 2017 uh, would have to be um, a game that we had talked about recently. <laughs> like how recently, Kyle? Maybe about... 15 minutes ago. <laughs> do you want to drink an O'Doul's and talk about it? No, I do not. I don't want to talk anymore <laughs> about it, but Hello Neighbor was my biggest disappointment, and I will leave it at that. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. But why? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we do not need to. If you're curious as to why, just rewind and start the episode yeah. over again. And if you don't understand it, well, then this show isn't for you. Oh, man. <laughs> no. Wow. Well, play the game yourself. Joke, but <laughs> yeah. Wow. Now play, yeah, gotten... there you go. Play the game yourself. <laughs> this wow. show's for you. Have, have we gotten big enough to do that? Start telling people we don't need your kind of fans. We don't need you now. <laughs> not. Please don't leave. <laughs> we'll go back to food if we have to. <laughs> um, all right. So those were the worst. Now, um, Talk about AAA titles. Uh, Cody, what was your favorite AAA title this year? Assassin's Creed Origins. Okay. Ooh, very nice. Are we going into describing okay. or are we just listing them? Uh, I mean, a few minutes of description, I think, is in order. I agree. Because I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, give me at least a, a few I'm reasons a, I'm why you like it. I'm a big fan of the Assassin's Creed series. Um, Black Flag was my... Um, overall favorite and then oh it's unquestionably the best no question oh yeah that one was amazingly good and then this one just the fact of being in egypt and being assassin's creed and uh all the side quests and the storyline and everything is i just i liked it It it's it's a good sit on the couch and chill play type game rather than have to worry about multiplayer or bad stories or uh, uh, pay-to-win type crapola. It's just, it's a good, fun game of a good series that I've always enjoyed. Okay. And Uh, just as a side note, I think Ubisoft deserves a huge shout-out for shipping out three huge AAA games and... For not getting a, a whole bunch of love, being Assassin's Creed Origins, Ghost Recon Wildlands, and Mario and Raven Rabbids. Um, for not making any controversy um, by the standards of both the media and fans. Both thoroughly enjoyed it, and I believe that Ubisoft just deserves a huge shout out. All right. That's fair. Yeah. That is... Uh... There. We're looking at you, EA, as usual. Uh, <laughs> Carrington. You there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay. What What is your AAA of the year? My AAA of the year 
will have to be Zelda Breath of the Wild. I feel like that game, it's been one of the few games and just things in general that I've experienced where there was so much hype going into it. And not only did Zelda live up to that hype, in my opinion, but it exceeded that hype um, with a lot of the things, a lot of small little details that I love about video games and especially that game. Because if you've paid attention to the, um, like the, the PR for that game, Nintendo revealed just a sliver of it, and I felt like uh, going into that game, and Nintendo revealed too much, when in reality they revealed not enough. Um, there's a lot of um, elemental things about the game that I really enjoyed. Um, there are a lot of puzzles that you have to solve and think outside the box. And I've said it before on here and, and even on our crossover show, Crossplay Compatible, I feel like Zelda redefined what a Zelda game is and in a good way, a very good way. And I feel like that's a good direction for the Zelda series and it's refreshing. I've never been a huge Zelda fan myself. I mean, I had respect for the series, but I've never been like, oh my gosh, I gotta play Zelda. Like Breath of the Wild is probably the second no, no no it's the third zelda game i've ever owned and so um yeah it, it's zelda breath of the wild for me awesome andrew all right um i would have to say that i guess before i list mine definitively uh i would totally on a lot of levels i agree with carrington uh breath of the wild was awesome and uh like i said i can't it can't have enough praise for it really and like so i'm a, i'm a i consider myself a pretty big zelda fan i mean i still put orcarina of time up there as one of my top five games of ever and uh quite a few others that i really enjoyed playing and breath of the wild is definitely a deserving candidate and if it weren't for wanting to try to have a little more diversity i might put my vote behind it but i think i'm gonna have to go with uh super mario odyssey oh nice so that um kind of some of the things Carrington said, I think would apply in the same way. Um, I think, I, I don't know. I suppose it pretty much, I think it met the hype, you know, it was pretty hyped and I think it delivered fully it might've even exceeded a little bit, but I like the fact that um, I think it reset the standard for what a Mario game is, um, you know, cause super Mario maker <clears throat> loved that game. Still enjoy watching other people, especially playing online. Some of the incredible creativity that you see, you know, the levels that people cre create and what people are able to, actually accomplish on that is incredible but it still was i mean for all of its awesomeness and how much love it's still you know it got and it's still getting and how many people are still playing it it was basically just a you know a compilation and a rehash where they allowed you to go in and you know and make your own worlds um where super mario odyssey you know um uh, not that it was completely new in every sense but kind of struck out on its own and really did the uh 3d world right and uh the addition of, you know, obviously Mario's hat as a legitimate character that uh, actually had usefulness and really opened up, uh, you know, a lot of really cool opportunities and um, ways to, you know, solve different puzzles and to interact with the world. I mean, I'm sorry, but when you let me throw a hat on a T-Rex and control a T-Rex, <laughs> I'm probably going to like it. So, I mean, just so many things like that game was just... Uh, I expected to like it, but it greatly exceeded my uh, my expectations. Um, but I, I, I think it reset the standard for what a, a truly great modern Mario game is. Uh, so definitely. Awesome. Um, and Carrington, you had a thought. I remember we discussed that briefly. What was your addition you were going to make to that game? That still, even though I, I love Zelda and you guys, I sat here and said it was my favorite AAA title of the year. Blah, blah, blah. Super Mario Odyssey probably still has some of the best level design I have seen in a video game to date with some of the most visually and and just nostalgic way like you see so many new things with mario that the the callbacks to past marios i think is done so well and it's not in any way shape or form gimmicky because it's actually a part of the game and exactly i completely agree on that one yeah and the other thing too when you said about the t-rex i forgot how much hype the t-rex got as far as you could control a t-rex but that is just like a small portion of oh, the game yeah. like it, you do it's like right off like the very first level you get to control a t-rex and you just kind of like well what where are they going to go from here and little do you know it just grows from there in such an exponential way yeah i know that, it's crazy to think the t-rex is the tip of the iceberg my friend <laughs> it, it is and, crazy and, to think yeah and even then 
hats off to Nintendo's PR team for showing you something that you're going to love. But at the same time, it's such a small part of the game. Um, like I said, they did it with Zelda also where, you know, it's just I don't know how they do it or what. But their PR team is on fire right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Very cool. I completely agree. So there you have it. As you would say, Kyle, uh, awesome. Mario Odyssey. I still need to game play that. Unfortunately, I, I uh, my game of the year um, is Zelda Breath of the Wild as well. Uh, and I say unfortunately because uh, I had beat it just a couple weeks ago. Threw Ganon, you know, to the pits, got rid of him. So I put my switch down, put my hands behind my head, and was thinking, oh, I'm going to move on to Mario. Well, the next day they released the uh, the Champions oh, DLC. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Which, by I the have way, not yet to touch Mario yet. You get but, a freaking motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Zelda, uh, my AAA game of the year. I've never uh, beaten a Zelda game to completion. You know, I've never completely finished it. That is a confession. But I beat this one. Uh, and I'm glad that I went through it. Um, I agree with a lot of things that Carrington said. Uh, just the dynamic of the world and and some of the side quests that you go on. And just the random things you find in the world just really are intriguing. Uh, the boss battles are fun. Um... I don't know. It was just, it was such a cool adventure to go on. Uh, and a, it, it was a good story. I didn't really think the dungeons were dungeons in it. They, they, uh, I don't know. They didn't feel like dungeons to me, at least. Um, they were just, I don't know, mazes. I guess that is a dungeon. I don't know. Anyways, I love the game. Um, so, yeah, Zelda Breath of the Wild. It's game of the year for me. So now, uh, the big thing is our top three favorite indie games this year. Um, I think we've all kind of carefully thought about the games that we've discussed previously and taken into consideration which ones were our personal favorites. Uh, so to start this, we'll, we'll keep going in the same order. Uh, Cody, starting with number three, and we'll go down to one, uh, your, your indie game this year. What Remains of Edith Finch? Okay. Very nice. Um, like, uh, who was next? Andrew? Carrington, I believe. Carrington. Yeah. So we're not really going to say Wait. why. We're just going to throw the, throw, the, throw our, our, our games out there then? Uh, well, actually, I think a lot of them, if you want to hear more about them, you can review one of our earlier episodes. And Ooh, good point. <laughs> or, good we, point. or we list all three and then we discuss our, Go into our, discussion. our third and second and first. Okay. That's fine with me. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, that's fine with me. Okay. Um, my number three is Golf Story. Oh, nice. Uh, Andrew? I think I would have to go with number three would be um, Shovel Knight. Okay, awesome. Uh, mine uh, was a toss-up between um, uh, Little Nightmares and Rhyme. Ooh. Dude, yeah. rhyme is three. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. What the crap are one wow. and two? Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. Hey, we're, uh, talking, we're, we're talking. We're talking personal. About later. We'll talk about later. We're talking personal here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. For me, three. Uh, rhyme was number three. Okay. Not saying it's a bad game at all. Not saying I love the game. To well, pieces. top three is still no. Top three is still good. Ne- ne- never mind. I'm, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let it ride for now. Go on. Okay. Uh, Cody, two. Cuphead. Okay. My number two is a game we have not talked about, Bomber Crew. Oh, I don't even know what that is. I know. <laughs> I, will, I know. I know. We'll talk about it, though. We'll talk right. about it. Andrew? Uh, my number two would be Cody's number three, What Remains of Edith Finch. Okay. And my number two is Golf Story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cody, All right, Cody. Drum roll, Drum roll, please. please. <laughs> Apparently, it was Kyle's number three. I have to go with uh. Ryan. <laughs> uh, Carrington? Carrington. Yeah. Uh, my number one was also Rhyme. Andrew? My number one was also Rhyme. 
Man, now I feel bad. Oh. <laughs> and what, what about what about you, Kyle? Uh, my yeah. number one was What Remains of Edith Finch. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, At least it was all on our list. All right. It was, yeah. And like I said, I absolutely loved Ryman. And while we were sitting here, I was thinking, like, you know, that game, you know, it, it struck an emotional chord. And the game, I, you can go back to the episode and listen to it. We, I think we all highly praise that game. Yeah. 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 Oh, we absolutely. Did. No. Well, it's, I think, how do you want to address this? Do, like, do we want to, since we kind of listed them and, Certain ones, especially, you can kind of go back through in like review our earlier episodes. Do we kind of just want to champion one, if that makes sense? And uh, not maybe. I mean, we, do we really want to discuss all three of these in depth, like going round table? No, I, no, 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 I think like a no. couple, maybe a just sentence highlight. or two at the most. Yeah, you can highlight it. Okay, all right. So, do we want to do like all three as each person, or keep going around again? Just go into a discussion. It doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Well, um. I'll kick it off then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to say on rhyme, like the reason why I have to give it indie game of the year is because name me another indie game that has the length, which it's a five or six hour indie game is pretty darn good. Mm-hmm. Like it's got the length, it's got the polish, it's got the story and it's got, I mean, the gameplay itself is awesome. You know, good mechanics, solid puzzles. And it's even got this, it's got the soundtrack. I mean, yeah. Yeah. it's, solid on every aspect it's uh it, it honestly it goes well beyond in my opinion what a typical indie title would uh i mean when i think indie i think you know need some polish you know two or three hours max uh you know cute little idea but almost like a short story you know a great concept perhaps but not fully realized but rhyme was a fully realized fully fleshed out game and I think that's what makes it truly exceptional, especially as an indie title. I think it would could even be up there, uh, kind of maybe in the honorable mention section for like game of the year, especially yeah. depending on your kind of game that you prefer. For sure. And I think too, it does so much with saying so little through the entire thing. Oh yeah, I was exactly. Gonna say that. Yeah, yeah. It, it, is there, there's no dialogue through the game, is there? Mm-mm. No, I don't Never. think there's other any the, other than the boy saying hey. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's like yeah, there's a few like little uh subtitles, but it's the music, dude. We all like remember we were all talking about it yeah. on that episode. Like the music gives you freaking chills. Oh yeah. Yeah. That and, whole intro. And it's crazy to think like so when it comes to like that I guess the second chapter's anger, I think so to speak, how scary it was that bird thing, you know, when he's oh. coming after me stuff like I, I like I had little adrenaline going through it, and then I was, and then the the depression stage was was very. Uh, it hit home. Mm-hmm. Like, rhyme, rhyme. Is I didn't have to think about when we were coming up the list. Like rhyme was was like one that stuck out to me. For sure. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. It was like when you said that come up with your top three. I'm like, well, I already know what number one yep. is. So. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it, Kyle. I'm sorry. No, your view is, <laughs> like I said, that game is, is well-deserving game of the year. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to talk to you guys about what remains of Edith Finch when we recorded or when you all recorded. Um, but like I said, Rhyme struck an emotional chord with me, but Edith Finch uh, I mean, for me was... Do you, um, Carrington, do you think he meant Edith Fitch? Edith yes, Fitch. Yes, Edith Fitch. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Could the, uh, what is that? The, um... Oh, shoot. What is it called when someone calls something like, oh, something else? It's like off-brand. It's the off-brand version. Yes, the off-brand, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Edith Finch. The Kroger brand. Yeah, the Kroger brand. There you go. But yeah, Rhyme uh, is totally deserving of Game of the Year. I I agree with that. Um, But when personally thinking, like, being selfish, what remains of Edith Finch was the one that, you know, left me, left me kind of. I'm surprised. Cu- well, the way. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm, go, I'm go, surprised go Cuphead ahead. didn't show up on many of your lists. With how much it, you enjoy, you never had a prayer with me. Yeah. I'm just throwing that out. Yeah. There. When I, I it made my top ten okay. when I was yeah, like, making the sure. list, and then it even even made my top five. But then when I had to, when we said we're gonna do a top three, the only reason I cut it out, um, was because of. I didn't feel like it, it made an impact like the other three did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's kind of the same for me. Uh, 
I don't know. The, the game with, itself is not. It, there's a good story behind it, but it's not story driven like Rhyme, What Remains of Edith Finch is. Yeah. And, and Golf Story, you know, it has story in the title. <laughs> so, well, Golf Story was just a lot of fun, just because it's just so quirky. It almost reminded me of Scott Pilgrim, which is yeah. the highest compliment I can pay anything ever. Yeah, it, it it's such a it's such a great game. Uh, and, and you know it's got the retro graphics graphics going on for it uh, funny jokes like jokes that made me laugh out loud and just you know that game is full of life the only thing kind of going circling back a little bit to edith uh, finch the reason i couldn't give it game of the year for myself and like it's deserving as like even you as you said rhyme is deserving of game of the year i could certainly see a solid argument for it being deserving in its own right so i'm not taking anything away from your view right. um but i think my two reasons why i couldn't is once again I kind of game length it was too short in my opinion yeah. that it was that almost disqualified it not because of anything else like right well everything we got from it was great but it was too short at, just because of you know that's how it was and then I cannot in good conscience give a game of the year award to a walking simulator and I I know it was a little more than a walking sim like there was a few times you could interact with it. But those are my two biggest reasons. Like it's you know it's number two for me. So really great. That just shows you how much I thought of it overall. But because of the length and the fact that it's basically a walking simulator, I, I just could not give it game of the year. That's a valid point though, because because I sat and thought about that a lot. Like, you know, is this really a game? I mean, there you don't do a whole lot in it. You just kind of explore. Um. But I guess you know it. it the end of things it is a game it has a couple small puzzles in it and stuff but it is short as well i agree with that too short um but still man that game it had it had me clutching the controller from the beginning to the end just dude i think we all like had a little bit of like sympathy pains when we were playing the level with the um oh what was his name it was towards the end of the level when you're the 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 teenager the who was working the or maybe he was like in his 20s working in the fish factory yeah. What was his name? I can't remember his I name. Can't remember. Yeah, I can't but either. When he like when you know what's gonna happen, you're like, oh my god, he's gonna get his hand cut off. Oh yep. my god, mm-hmm. this is crazy. And it's like yeah. then you're like, uh <laughs> Yep. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I like those are everything is a solid choice. Every, you know, Cuphead, Rhyme, What Remains of Edith Finch. Golf um, story, totally. I, I that definitely deserves to be in the conversation. The only reason I included Shovel Knight I had almost forgotten about it, like, and I know that it's technically a game that's come out, you know, obviously not in 2017, yeah. but because of the DLC that continued to come out with it, and obviously the last of the DLC, you know, fell in 2017, that's, um, that was almost more of an honorable mention hat tip, because I freaking love Shovel Knight. It is hilarious, and just awesomely done, and, like, Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, I don't know how they thought, like, yeah, let's make knights and give them shovels. It'll be awesome. It's It works, though. It's just, yeah. uh, once again, I just kind of more of a mad respect yeah, that for that game Yeah, that is still on my general. backlog of games to play. It's fantastic, because, like like Andrew said, like, I know the game didn't come out, um, and I was the one who was, when I was talking to Andrew, like, games that came out and why I included it. Because Shovel Knight made my top ten uh, easily uh, for 2017. Because the DLC, it was almost like a completely different story um, with the DLC that came out with it um, this year, this past year. Almost the way like the Taken King did for Destiny for, to like kind of relate to you guys. Like it was that kind of level DLC for Shovel Knight. It was almost a completely added to the the lore in the game and, and just overall, you know, just more to play for it, which was awesome. Yeah. You know, and, and it kind of brings a question, you know, with you guys talking about Shovel Knight and I hope. This might go off a little, to- uh, go a little off topic, but you know, would you consider ports that were that were done in t- twenty seventeen games that could be um, considered game of the year? Ah, uh, that's a tough call. My, my initial reaction when I kind of knew where you were going with it was yes, but like now, just like in the instant after, kind of not. Yeah, uh, as it would depend on how far removed. Like if we're talking about something that was done, you know. Eight or ten years ago, yeah, I think I would, just because it's almost like a resurrection. Yeah. Uh, but if it's something that's relatively recent, I guess no. So I guess it would depend for me. It does depend to me also because another game that made my list was Wonder Boy, um, mm-hmm. which is a 
port slash remaster, but that game's like 20 years old now. And the remake is so good. So good. I yeah, can't, I can't, it. yeah, I can't speak yeah. highly enough of it. And it, I would consider, like, it, like I said, it made my top 10, but when I narrowed it down, I cut it out. Yeah. Cause see, I was thinking about that with, with Rhyme and uh, the Flame and the Flood had both been ported over to the Switch. Although I guess Rhyme would be still, because it was released this year, whereas the Flame and the Flood wasn't. Um, you know, could ports potentially be game of the year if they were executed correctly? Yeah, I just think it depends on a couple things. Um, if a year or two, I think five max we're looking at, like within the same generation. I don't, mm-hmm. well, even one generation out. Um, it it really does depend. But if we're talking several years, I, I think it can be considered. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. And a game like uh-huh. Players Unknown Battleground, I don't think can count because it is not even released officially, which bugs me a lot because it's still like a beta slash alpha kind of state yeah yeah I, I don't consider betas or anything like i don't any early access stuff to be considered game of the year because technically it's not complete exactly. but uh going back to game of the year uh rhyme is rdp's game of the year yeah uh, yeah fully support that yeah absolutely I I like, shut up as guys. a crew <laughs> yeah uh, definitely well deserving. Um, I don't know if you haven't played it yet. Uh, it is you know it's out PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, uh, PC as well. Um, you should definitely pick it up, give it a try, and let us know what you think of it. Um, but yeah, great game, fantastic game. I don't think we can speak highly enough about Ryan and how fantastic it is, and just. Just real quick, I, I want to take a spotlight just for a few seconds because uh, I said my number two was Bomber Crew, which we did not talk about on the show. Um, it yep. released um, a couple months ago, back in October, I believe. Right now, it's only on PC. Um, it's a World War II uh, bomber game. My brother turned me on to it, and I have had... It is probably one of the most addicting games I've ever played. It's a micro sim kind of game, so you have different aspects of the bomber. You know, you got your pilot, your mechanic, your radio operator, navigator, your gunners, and you have to, you get a mission from the captain, you're supposed to go out and bomb or, you know, take photographs, uh, you know, spying on, on the enemy and stuff like that. It is such a well-done game um, by Runner Duck Games. Um, I can't speak highly enough for it. It is supposed to get a console release sometime in 2018, um, but it did release, I, I want to say it was in October, um, on PC, and I can't speak highly enough. It is a game I'm definitely going to rebuy when it comes out on the Switch. Um, it's a game if you do have a PC. I mean, a potato can run. Uh, Bomber Crew doesn't take a whole lot, so if you're thinking I need some beastly PC to run it, you don't. Because um, it's only, I think it's 15 bucks on Steam right now. It's 9 out of 10 rating on Steam right now. Um, I would highly recommend it. I just wanted to put that out there because I think it does deserve some love, even though we did not talk about it on the show. Yeah, that, that is definitely something I want to check out when it comes out on the Switch. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's that's what we got for 2017, Rhyme. And, I mean, I don't know. I don't have anything else to add to that. The game, like I said, the game is well-deserving. Um, do you guys have anything else that you want to add in before we move on to the next segment? I think we said it, unless Cody or... So whoever's got something else to add, I'm good. I am good as well. I think we can agree. I think we talked about it before. Um, we are going to try and send the developers of Rhyme some RDP merch for, for winning our, our 2017 game of the year. Um, we're going to try and get that out there, possibly. Maybe, hopefully. Oh, yeah. Sounds good. Yep. I'm in. Um, so, yeah. Let's take one more. Uh, just... A real quick break here, uh, and then we will get into the uh, NPC game. We here at Real Dudes want to give a huge shout out to Guitaro Man for letting us use his music on this episode. You can find more of his music on SoundCloud, and be sure to give him a follow on Twitter at I Am Guitaro Man. That is G I T A R U M A N. Thanks, and let's get back to this episode. All right, so we are back with a little game called the NPC game. Uh, 
previously, when we did the first round of this, uh, we left off with Carrington at a whopping three, Andrew at 1.5, and Cody in the lead for last at zero. <laughs> and holding strong. I like the way you put holding it. Holding strong. <laughs> hey, you got to stay positive. Um, so the way this, game's, this game works, uh, I'm going to read a script uh, basically through the eyes of an NPC in a game, uh, kind of describing the game, and you guys have to call in and guess the game. Uh, basically, just say your, you say your name, and then I call on you, and you guess it. Uh, and I, to remind people of the scoring system, if memory serves... If you get it right, you get a point. If you get it wrong, you lose a point. And I think there is a provision for half points depending on the situation. How close you are. Uh, my, the only thing is you can't go past zero, right? Uh, yeah, we'll probably stay out of negative territory. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right. So this one, we'll go ahead and start it. Huh. What is that on my ankle? It itches. I can't reach it. Ow! It bit my ankle. I can feel it pulling on my hair and crawling on my back. Get off! Get off! Ow! It's just stung the top of my head. I'm bleeding. Oh god, oh god, oh god, what is it? I'm losing lots of dark, dark blood, feeling woozy, falls over dead. Uh, I ain't touching that with a ten foot pole. Uh... <laughs> Pass. Pass? Oh <laughs> Pretty much. I have no clue. Uh, can, you, can I phone a friend? Yeah, really. Uh, 50-50? Um, okay, I'm going to guess. I'm going to lose a point here, though. But, um, Mr. Mosquito? Again. What is it? Mr. Mosquito? No. Shoot. Okay. That's one point down. No! Okay, oh, uh, how could you do that to yourself? Andrew's cl- crawling to the top. Give me a read hey. again. Keep your expectations low. You can low. read it a hundred more times. I don't think I'm going to yeah, get it. Yeah, you could it. read it. I'm not going to get that one. It's like I have nothing. And I risking my one and a half points. They're scared. You can read it again All and right. I'll Google it, but I, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> that's about it. Uh, should I give you – Do I? should I give clues? Yeah, I guess we can like d- diminish it now to a, most you can get is a half point. All right. And what clues. game is it from? It's uh, – uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's a Sony title. Uh, Shoot. Okay. It's a well-known Sony title. A well-known Sony title. Are you sure it's not Mr. Mosquito? Because that's a Sony title. Pretty positive. <laughs> wow, character. <laughs> you really campaigned for that Is point. Is that an- another guess? Because that would be minus one. Oh, oh no, no, no. I'm just done. I'm just trying to, you know. You know. Uh, I can feel it pulling on my hair and crawling up my back. And it stung me on the top of my head. Oh Bleeding gosh. lots of dark, dark blood. I feel like that's a really big hint, but it's just not clicking. It's not giving me anything, dude. And I really want to... I'm, I'm on my honor, guys. I have like reached for my phone, and I was like, no, that's not the right way. I can't do it. I'm not going to Google it. So right. I, got, I don't know. Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, my gosh. Uh, dude, that wasn't very good. Like, I'm not blaming you, per se, but... <laughs> Because I played I mean, Shadow of the Colossus and like loved it to death and played it hardcore. I'm just saying, I really I put a lot of hours on that game. Crawling on my back and clicking. stung me on my head. Nah, no, sorry, bro, <laughs> don't know it. <laughs> so you want me to take Carrington's point away then? Yeah, yeah, still take yes. it because I actually guess. Oh, you just, yeah, you totally okay. gotta take that away. Give me a All chance right. here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys should know this one. So I'm there just like, you know, cleaning the walls at work. This guy came in and told me to follow him, then made me jump through a portal made of birds, and now I'm unemployed. I think it's the drugs. I don't know anything tonight. I'm stupid. <laughs> portal made of birds. A portal made of uh-huh. birds. Uh-huh. I feel like that's also a big hint. That's also not clicking, I'm, but give me a second. I'm going to be like, Cody, uh, what game is it from? It, we talked about it not too long ago. Could you use that in There's a your sentence? Hint. There's your hint. So I'm there, just like, you know, cleaning the walls at work. Then this guy came and told me to follow him. Then made me jump through a portal made of birds. Now I'm unemployed. 
Angry Birds. Oh. <laughs> Cody stole. The I can't go down a point. <laughs> That's true. He can take. He keep taking a shot. Portal Two. <laughs> we talked nope. about. Kyle said we talked about it recently. Well, if it was on the last episode, that's really a disadvantage to poor me and Cody, because, you know, we weren't actually What did we talk about on the last episode? I don't even remember. It It was something. No, it wasn't Abzooks. That's an underwater game. No. Portal made of birds. (laughs) Dude, it doesn't matter how you say it. You can say it in Spanish for all I care. I'm still not going to get it. Oh my gosh. I I feel like I should know this. I'm not even going to try. I don't know. You know what? I don't know if Andrew played this. I know. Is this before Andrew? It might have been. Oh. That's cheating. You're giving him an extra hint. A portal made of birds. You go for it. Two. It's not rhyme. One. Nope. It's over. All, All right. right. What do we got? Was that a yeah. guess? Did no. you did you slyly try to make a guess without uh, making a guess? No, no, I didn't. That was. I don't know. That was. I was just trying to. I was right. just trying to like in my head, like you know, knock things off. I know it's not rhyme. All right. Well, it's Odd World, Abe's Odyssey. Oh my gosh! Oh, that makes yep. sense. Yeah, yeah. It never does. even that makes sense. Never even heard of it. You've never heard of Abe's yeah. Odyssey? Nope. Oh. I know. You I should have teach it. me. I should have oh. gotten it. Oh gosh, because that was a good game. I forgot there was a remake this past year. Oh gosh. All right. Kyle's like all disillusioned at this point. <laughs> you didn't think you'd be going this <laughs> fast, right. did you? No. <laughs> all right. I I don't know how well this one's going to work out, but I thought it was funny, so we'll see. Um. All right. I work at the bank as a clerk. I have a decent job, pays well, can't complain. We have this client who comes in several times a day. He has a couple hundred million, so we can't really say anything to him except, uh, except bending over to his every whim. He insists on being called Pimp Daddy. We laugh it off. Bank managers tells us to go along with it since he's such a loyal customer. This guy has a safety deposit box, too. He puts the most ridiculous stuff in it. Clothes, household items, heck, even food. Still can't complain. One day, he comes into the withdrawal stuff from a safety deposit box. He takes a couple dozen pieces of leather, a needle, and a thread and starts making leather chaps. Expertly crafts leather chaps in a matter of seconds right in front of me. Does this for an hour. I lost count after 300. Dances and teleports away. Ding, 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 ding. I got this. Is it RuneScape? Canton. Yep. Yes. <laughs> okay. I have a feeling we're going to end this game with the same exact Oh, points. my gosh. The throwback right now. Yeah. I thought that was a funny one. Uh, come on, Kyle. Give me something to work Hold with Hold on. Here. Hold on. I can't make bricks without clay. <laughs> I should improvise something as the, the last one. It is the first MMORPG that is still running today. Yeah, and it's on uh, on mobile now. Oh, really? Ugh. Very nice. Just keep talking, character. I'm going to find a locker to shove you in. <laughs> find a safety deposit <laughs> box right. with a bunch of leather. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. All right, here's another one. ra ha 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 You scare? Sorry, me joke. Ha-ha. Hello, me barbarian. Live in camp with friends. It good, me good, me live in camp. Me like fire and pillage. Sometimes me and friend go for a walk. We see man, call him Babylon. Maybe Egypt. Me know now. Man. Hey, hey, hey. Carrington? Civilization? Which one? Three? Nope. Oh, oh dang. Civilization four? Going. Civilization nope. two? Five. This is one. <laughs> Andrew got it. Yes! I'll take my half point because I can't in good conscience there actually take two. a whole point. Character Character's gets half minus half a point. 2.5? <laughs> yeah. Cody, you're still at zero. I can't I can't <laughs> go down, so I'm not I'm not mad. Uh, do, do you guys want to do that? Oh, Lord. 
If you got one more shirt, go for right, it. Give me, uh, just just chat among yourselves for a second here. Coming for you, Carrington. Coming. I'm only half a point I behind. Feel it coming. <laughs> Oh, I think Lord. we can Come all on, agree um, that Star Wars, we at least liked it. Yeah. Oh, wow. He just pulled, wow. <laughs> oh, hold <laughs> on. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 He, like that. he didn't just mean, like, pull out the bazooka. <laughs> he meant, like, chat amongst yourselves. <laughs> you know, I was just trying to make for, you know, some lighthearted like, discussions among us, you know. I feel like, I feel like this is one of those role-playing games now. Carrington pulls a live grenade from his backpack, pulls the pin. <laughs> what do you <laughs> and do? And tosses it at your feet. What do you do? Pop quiz, hot shot. Oh boy! You know, speaking of of of, of role playing, we should get a real dudes role playing. That would be cool. I, I don't like know. Uh, a um, Star Wars D and D type thing. Yeah, yeah. How cool would that be? Release them as a sideshow. That would be crazy. That would be kind of neat. I can see that. It'd be some work, but it'd be pretty fun. Oh yeah, for sure. Cody, I am trying so hard to find something for you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't change it just for me. It's okay. If you stick right. to Microsoft, I think we'll be good. Uh, no, I can't do that one. I can. So I pre ordered, and it won't be here for another two months, the Sonic. Uh, Funko Pop collection. So I'm still waiting for those. Where did you order them from the website? Yeah, yeah, I did. I pre-ordered them, and I just said it would be here sometime like January, or February. But I'm thinking February because that's just how my life is. Poor somebody's got a case of the poor me. Mm -hmm. First world problems, right? No doubt. You know they have nothing. But Skyrim and Fallout, Skyrim, GTA, <laughs> uh, Fallout, and that's about it. You should like it's ridiculous. All right, I we can something. call it there. Oh, I, I, oh okay. I, man, I I think I don't know if Cody knows this or not. I want to say you do. We'll find he out. Wants to believe. We'll find out. All right. Look at it however you want. They're still the good guys. Because no matter how you put it, living in a city where the government knows everything about you down to the most minuscule detail isn't fun. Civil servant, not a cop. An officer of the force. Or a police officer. A civil servant. If people keep leaving, there won't be any civilians to serve. The government says people are leaving because of better jobs. Then it's because of better living conditions. Then because of crime rate, and so on, and so on. This isn't really like this. Sim City. All right. Nope. Hold on. Uh, people are hey, leaving. Hey, yes. Oh, I there you go. <laughs> uh, well, are are we? I don't know. I don't know. It, it just keeps going on over them. and over about civil servants, and it doesn't really. It doesn't really go uh, into the actual game detail. That was a really dumb one. <laughs> that's the best I got. Like that's the only thing I think of. Uh, uh, we're at the 120. Yeah, uh, I'm good. We're I'm, gonna stop we'll, at that one. Then, we'll, leave, we'll leave. We'll uh, leave Carrington with the lead for for now. Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay, Ooh, all right. right. This is the last revolution. one right here. This is the last one right here. Wait, wait. Uh, what, what was the answer for the last one? I'm, I'm just. Confused. It was. It was Mirror's Edge. Oh, I could. Dude, kind of, sort of. Wow. That? No, no, let's not. No, no, that's terrible. It's not anything about parkour for crying out loud. I know there's Please. nothing about it. Yeah. All right, you ready? Hardcore parkour. Man, today sucks. My life. It's barely like 10 in the morning. Now I'm in this stupid diner eating some beans, okay? Just normal Frank Bowers eating some beans. Not going to lie, though, the beans are pretty bad. I really, or not bad. The beans are pretty, pretty darn good. Uh, I love these beans. Wait, is that girl who almost shot me? The, you eat like a pig? Try the floor. That's it. 
That was terrible. What the too. crap? That was terrible. Okay. Oh, that was terrible. Life too. is strange. I'm, I thought I was on drugs. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Give him that point. <laughs> Give him that point, sir. He deserved what? it. Yeah. <laughs> Cody. Well done. What was the giveaway for that? Well the done. diner. Is half of that game takes place in a diner. And then the girl who almost shot me makes me think it's the janitor. So, spoilers. Oh, it's it's a, <laughs> it's an old game. You should have played it by now. But oh, that's yeah, funny. that's the first one that came, comes to my go. mind. You know what, Carrington? As the, as Brianna and you were saying the other day, clap and a half. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, you just have to All trust right. me that you got the half clap. I promise. Yeah, yeah. Just imagine half a, a half a clap. Uh, so that puts Cody at one. Is it? I'm at two. Carrington's at two and a half. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, Coming so for you, Carrington. Guys, that was fun. I apologize for not getting more <laughs> more in line uh, here, but I think you did a pretty good job job of telling people that we like Star Wars. <laughs> I was looking for it. <laughs> pretty much, Carrington's just like throwing that bombshell out there. Just, just drop it. Um. So yeah, uh, that is the last episode for this year. We will be back mid-January 2018 with an all-new game that I think Carrington picked. Yeah, should I announce it? Yeah. All right, we're going with Doki Doki Literature Club, everybody, oh, on PC, God. which is free. Let's do one. this. <laughs> Let's do this. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. And I was I've prepping. I I've done a replay of it I I again. Download that now. Huh? And I'm ready to replay it again just for this episode, this upcoming episode. All right. I've never heard of the game. I've never looked it up, and I'm not going to look it up until I start playing yeah, it. Please do not look anything up. I need it. you guys to go in with a fresh it. mind. Like it has to be fresh. Eh, unfortunately, I won't be going in blind, but <laughs> blind enough, but... right? Like you, you get it. You get it. <laughs> That'll be a good uh, game for everyone to talk yeah. about. Yes. So, yeah. 2018 is going to be a big year. Uh, we've got, I think, f- four or five interviews lined up uh, that we will Some start. Some big interviews. Big yeah, interviews. Pretty, pretty awesome interviews uh, lined up for the first half of 2018. Um, we will be trying to make some uh, presents at more cons. and, and You gaming. might see a city 3 We're not saying you will. <laughs> We're not saying you won't. It just, just you know, it's possible. Just it, put it out there. It might. We are happen. saying E3. You might have heard it here first. Give us some tickets, please. E3 2018 will probably happen. We're just, you know, I think that's a very realistic, modest goal. Yeah. <laughs> that, the E3 2018. RDP E3. Hashtag. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. So, yeah, that that's pretty much it. Um, like I said... I think we talked about in the previous uh, mini episode. Uh, we were gonna try to do some more uh, interviews and uh, more um, you know, appearances at different cons and stuff. Just kind of, you know, reach out to our fans. So that's all that I have for this episode. Do you guys have anything else that you'd like to? Nope. I'm well. gonna go take some therapy and collapse. Okay. okay. Good. All right. Awesome. Well, that is us. Uh, We will see you next year. And, um, you know, have a rad uh, few weeks. Bye. (laughs) Later.